it is only purely for the purpose of our meeting here. Once again, I'll say that because this is such a very all important topic, I will just give an admonition that don't just merely listen, except you are in a place that makes it absolutely impossible for you to take some notes. Shortest pencil is better than the longest memory. No matter what, you will not remember everything I said. So I would advise, since you're all upcoming, upcoming ministers, I would advise that make some notes. Make at least, if you can't even make notes, bullet points. Don't just do it. Don't just do it on a piece of paper. And then later the paper is discarded. If seriously you want to grow, because the aim of this is to grow spiritually. The aim of all Bible teaching is for us to grow. So make bullet points and especially write down those Bible verses because they become your reference. It can be reference. Write down those Bible verses. If, ex if really you are really hungry for the truth, write those Bible verses down so that in your free time, don't just write it down and leave it at, at that. Write it down with the idea that you're going to go over them so that you yourself can become clear about it. So what I am doing is I'm supplying you with the, with the facts. It is entirely up to you to be convinced of those facts. So let us continue in what we've been doing. We are dealing with how to know if a message being preached is according to the truth of the word of God, part four. And I said, I'm doing this because it will help us when we even go out on evangelism. Because of the so many sounds, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that there are many sounds out there, but none of them is without significance. So it's important that as believers and who are ministers, everybody that is in Christ is called. Everybody is called. Everybody. In Hebrew chapter 3, it says that holy brethren, Holy brethren, Hebrews 3, 1, holy brethren who have been called or who have the heavenly calling. He called all of them brethren. He called all of them who have the heavenly calling. Now, so we are all called. But what happens is that the more you study and the more you are humble to learn, then the more it becomes clear to you and it develops your desire to teach others. So this is very, very critical for us to answer. This sits right in the middle of everything you're supposed to know. If this one is not clear, no matter what somebody preaches, no matter what you read in the Bible, it will never make sense to you. It will never make, and you will interpret things wrongly. A wrong understanding of the word will lead to a wrong interpretation of the word. It will lead to a wrong approach in your conduct to the word of God. So this one is crucial. So how to know if a message, sorry, being preached is according to the truth of the word of God, part number four. And I advise you that if for any reason, if you're really serious, you missed certain parts, we have our YouTube channel. You can go there, whatever it is, it's there. So you can go back and learn. For me, if there's anything that you should master for anything before you step out, even in ministry, this topic, you have to master it. You have to master this very well. It will help you in everything you do to correctly interpret the word of God and analyze the word of God. So now, under this topic, we are trying to answer what, how to know if a message being preached is according to the truth of the word of God. What is the major emphasis of the entire Bible? And once again, I want to stress, this is not Pastor Fred's mind. That is why I'm giving you Bible verses. Now, once again, just like in any school of learning, there is a syllabus. There is, there, is, there is a curriculum. The Bible has got its own syllabus and own curriculum. Jesus is the curriculum, and he gave it to the disciples. So that is what we're following. And if you watch throughout all the disciples, they all preach the same thing. All of them, from Acts chapter 2 to Acts chapter 20, I'm talking about after resurrection. So after resurrection, the things that have been written are the ones that are the explanation because before Jesus died, nobody could understand because nobody was born again. Not even Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are not doctrinal. They are eyewitness accounts. So they are not addressed to the born again man. I need to say that, and I say it always until you get it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not addressed to the born again man. They are addressed to the one who has not believed. The Jew under the law, they are, they are evangelistic. So you have to be very careful the way you pick Bible verses from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
you must you must be able to teach it in the right context. The, the ones that explain everything are the letters to the churches, which is from Romans to the book of Revelation. And that needs to be studied correctly. So this is what sits right in the middle of it. So that is where our syllabus is taken from. So what is the major emphasis of the entire Bible? That is where the, that's where the million dollar question is. What is the major emphasis? What is it about? Is the Bible about entrepreneurship? Is the Bible about, you know, um, uh, 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 you know solving our problems? Is the Bible, is, is, that, is that what it is about? What is the major emphasis of the entire Bible? Listen to the, the diction, listen to the operative noun, major emphasis, major emphasis, major of priority is what we are talking about. So who determines what should be the main emphasis on the teachings of the Bible? Bible school, no. You know, my mind, no. Anything anybody says, no. Who determines that? Jesus. Which way? Is it before resurrection, after resurrection? Before resurrection, he was trying to bring their mind to it, but more emphatically, after resurrection, when he resurrected. And so it will start there for, from Luke 24, after resurrection. After resurrection, because what he needed to do had now been done. Then that means that anything that comes there between after resurrection from Acts to the book of Revelation is the what the, the line that determines what we should teach. If a, if, a, if a preacher of the gospel, if a believer does not master that, you will not be able to teach the word of God. So Acts to Revelation is our document. It's our legal document. If you want to be prolific in teaching, you must master that area first. And I'm saying this because I've lived it and I live it. It will make your teaching and preaching easier. So that is what determines, that is our demarcation. Nothing after that, anything that comes after that, that anybody tries to add, which is not found from Acts of the Apostles to the book of, of Revelation is outside the curriculum. Even in Acts of the Apostles, you also have to be very careful because the apostles themselves were growing. Then the next question, should we pick any Bible chapter, verse, character, or historical story and make it fit any dispensation context? No. The idea of it was written by the Spirit. It's okay for all seasons. You, do, you should not try and bend it into a, a, another you know, era or epoch or dispensational fitting. It, it has got its own tripping, which is okay for all times. So let us go to our foundation Bible verse. Now, the book of Galatians, this is Galatians chapter one. The book of Galatians is the only book among the letters, though there are others, that deals exactly with what should we preach. That is the theme of the whole Galatians. Galatians one to Galatians chapter six. That is what Paul is addressing. That is what Paul is addressing. So the book of Galatians emphatically tells us what is the emphasis of the, of the Bible, who, it, who determines what should be preached and what should be preached and what the gospel is all about truly. And Paul made it clear that anything outside that was not the gospel. So every dream, every vision must line up with what is the, what is the parameters or the curriculum of it. So for example, the tenses are in the past tense. So the word has told you already. So if you have a dream and it does not line up with what has already been told, already been established, you just throw it away. You don't even have to worry yourself over it. The word of God says that you're already accepted. Then the dream is saying that you are not accepted. Obviously, all I need to do is throw it away. That's not, the, that's not from God. See that? So that means what the, the problem we're having is that we have left the word we have left the word, we have left the word, and now we are doubling into dreams and visions as if dreams and visions has got this, uh, an authority of its own outside the word. That is, that's where the problem is. So let us go back into our foundational, our foundational Bible verse. This is by the foundational apostle Paul. Remember, Paul himself was a Jew. He was the finest of the Pharisees of his time. He studied under a top lawyer called Gamaliel. He was trained in the finest institutions. He said, concerning, uh, concerning legalistic righteousness, blameless. A Hebrew of Hebrews, a true one. That means 
He, anything that would define him as being a true Jew in all extremes, Paul was one. So for Paul to become born again and ditch Judaism, Judaism is all the worship of Israel under the Old Testament. Paul ditched Judaism. So that's why he's talking about here. So Paul went to Galatia, a region, and he preached the gospel. Please, once again, every segment of this is important. So don't be familiar with it. Don't be familiar with it. And once again, I will also beg of you, leave your denominational belief systems. Leave it aside. Leave what you have known. Leave names and titles of people you know. This is the word of God. The fact that it is popular does not mean that it's accurate. People can overlook things. Doctors can make mistakes. I have, I have a, a relative who was going for a kidney transplant and three top doctors made a mistake. Three top, top surgeons. So it's not because the person has got triple D, 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 D. That means that he, cannot, he or she cannot be wrong or they cannot oversee or make mistakes. Pilots make mistakes. Pilots, do you know how long it takes to train pilots? I'm talking about aviation, commercial pilot. Do you know how long, do you know the rigorous, the rigorous training they go through and yet pilots make mistake? Oh, and haven't you made a mistake? Whilst you are typing a word on, on WhatsApp, you meant to say here, and then you rather type H-E-I and you sent it, you didn't see. Didn't you make that mistake? So what makes you think that when you begin to, when, when the apostles are correcting us, you are trying to say, oh no, oh, oh no, Pastor Fred, oh no. And then some people even take offense. I mean, you take offense at the word of God telling you the right thing. You take offense at the word of God trying to help you. You know, it's, 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 for me, it shocks me seriously when, when I see that attitude, that the word of God is helping you. The word of God is not insulting you. It's telling you that if you go this way, it's gonna make it more difficult for you. Stay this way, you say, no. So that's the same thing Paul wrote in Galatians 1.6. I am shocked uh, over how quickly you have strayed away from the anointed one who called you to himself by his loving mercy. I am frankly astounded. That means it beggars disbelief that you now embrace what? A distorted gospel. Then verse seven, that is a fake gospel. That is simply not true. There is only one gospel, the gospel of the Messiah. He's going to explain to us how you determine whether a gospel is true. Yet you have allowed those who mingle, mix law with grace is how you start it. So once again, I said yesterday, what is law? Law are conditions. If you go through the entire Old Testament, all the law is prefaced with a preposition, if, if, if you do so, so, and so, then I will do so, so, and so. If you do so, so, and so, then I will do so, so, and so. Why? Because nobody was born again then. Why? The sin, the price of the sin of Adam had not been eradicated or expiated for. Man, were, man was spiritually dead. So there was no, there was no mediator for relation between God and man. That is why the Bible says that now after resurrection in 1 Timothy chapter two from verse 11 down, it says that for there is one God and one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. So under the Old Testament, there was no mediator. That's why Job, Job cried that he's looking for a day's man, a mediator. Who's going to be a mediator between me, God and man? So under the Old Testament, the relationship was based on performance. Pay for your own sin. That's why they have to bring animal sacrifices. Pay for your own sin. So what Paul is saying is that you guys, you, are, you have not understood the thing. Yet you have allowed those who mingle law with conditions, with grace, to confuse you with lies. That means grace is without conditions. You did not play any part in it. All of it was done by Jesus Christ by himself, even though we we're the ones who were faulty or at fault. So the true gospel, the true gospel does not present any conditions except to receive the gift before and even whilst you have been born again. That's why I said that the fake gospel adds conditions. The fake gospel adds conditions. 
to make it seem like that is where now God will accept you. That is it right there. Then even Paul puts it even more succinctly. Anyone who comes to you with a different message, he has explained the verse seven. What is the different message? Grace plus conditions of law or anything that will make you feel that you have to do those things before God will accept you is a different message. The word different here, here is a Greek word, heteros, another of a different order. He said, anyone who comes to you with a different message than the grace gospel that you have received will have the curse of God come upon them. That word curse means that that person will not be able to proceed. He can talk all their talk and he can say all their say. Now, I want to bring an example here and I don't mean it to mean negative to anybody. One of, one of the spiritual daddies that mentored me from afar is Dr. Kenneth Hagin, H-A-G-I-N, of the, of the Rhema Bible, World renowned Rhema Bible College, a man who spent 60 years in ministry. He said after preaching for 18 years when he started in Enid, Oklahoma, in, 19, in 1923, there about, 27, there about, after eight years from 1927, you do the maths, plus 10, 37, plus eight. So we are talking right now about 1940. You know, Jesus appeared to him. Now in his book, I Believe in Visions, he talks about the eight visions that Jesus appeared to him. And none of it was against the word. Jesus said he's not going to do this anymore. The reason why Jesus appeared to him was that he said the error in the church was too much. So he said that all that you have preached for 18 years is not according to the truth. He said, why? He said, because you are doing the same thing that Paul is talking about. You are preaching grace, but you are attaching conditions for people to be accepted, for people's prayers to be heard. He said, that is not the truth. Now, if somebody like Kenneth Hagin, who has who basically all Bible schools in the world, and up to now, his books are relevant, even though he's going to be with Jesus, said that, then we've got to be very careful. So what can I think he said in that book? He said, he said that those days when Jesus told him about this, this thing here, he went to some men of God in his state in Oklahoma, and he told them that they, these guys were putting emphasis on the spectacular and the supernatural more than the great gospel. He told them that, you guys, if you don't stop what you're doing, I'll be here and you guys will be gone. They were angry at Kenneth Hagin. Some of them left for him saying that, and it's true. All of them, without a, died prematurely. It wasn't God who took them out. That's what it means. You come up against the message. You are misleading people from whom Jesus died. It's, that's why I'm saying that this is a very serious matter. And I don't want to be part of that. And I don't care what is popular, I will stay with what the apostle said. That's why Paul said, if anyone who comes to you with a different message than the grace gospel that you have received, what is the grace gospel you have received? It is salvation by faith alone that Jesus did with no conditions attached except to believe and receive. That is all. Before you are born again, you will believe and receive. After you are born again, the status is the same. Then he goes on. Look at, he makes it even more serious. For even if we, that means somebody can be an apostle and can still preach the different gospel. Because he's an apostle. He said, even we, or an angel, that's why you've got to be very careful, appeared before you to give you a different heteros gospel than that we have already proclaimed. What is the difference that an angel or, or the angel are part of what we call the manifestations of the supernatural? So if there's any manifestation of the supernatural that purports or makes you feel like you have to do something for God to accept you, you have to do something for your prayers to be answered. The moment you fall into that zone, you are in another gospel. That's what he's saying. He said, then what we have already proclaimed, this is what we have been proclaiming and emphasizing, God's curse will be upon him. Once again, the word curse is not curse as in, as in fetish, or juju or marabutash. The word curse here means you'll be restricted, you won't go far. And 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 over so far my life, I've seen I've seen ministries come and go. I've seen ministries come and go. They start with a queer wind fashion. They don't want to preach this because they think that when they preach this, oh, it's too soft. Let us preach something else. 
After a while, they fizzle out. I've seen it over and over. They, you, you can't even find where they are. They fizzle out. That's all, what, what Jesus told Paul on the road of Damascus. He told him that, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you coming up against this thing? It's not them. The people you are killing is not them. It's me. You are indirectly attacking. He said, it is very difficult for you to kick against the goats or the pricks. You won't succeed. It will not go anywhere. God has established his stuff. He makes it clear again, verse 9. I will make it clear. Anyone, no matter who they are, that brings you a different gospel than the grace gospel. So people who are even making joke. I, I hear believers even making joke about this. Eh, those people that have been preaching hyper grace. You have not read your Bible well. They are giving people license to sin. Are you God? Do you are you God? Did you die for anybody? The one who did it hasn't got a problem with that. He said, he said it's grace. It's a gift. It is a gift. Why do you have to work for a gift? Ephesians 2 8. For it is by grace that you have been saved. It is by grace that you were saved. Grace is Christ, what he did. You didn't play any part. I didn't play any part. All I did was I heard it, believed it, and received it. That is all. He said, anyone that brings you a different gospel than the grace gospel that you have received, let them be condemned and accursed. Verse 10, I am obviously not trying to flatter you or water down my message. So the watering down of the message, so the grace message is not a watered down message. Because that's what some people say, oh, you are preaching grace. I give people license. You have watered. You are not preaching sin. Look at that. He calls rather people adding conditions to the grace message rather the watered down message to be my message to be popular with men. But my supreme passion is to please God. For if all I attempt to do is to please people. So when people are not bold to state it that, listen, it is grace alone, no conditions, they are trying to please men and women. I will not be a true servant. So he says, in the same Galatians, the same, the same, the same theme, stand fast, Galatians 5.1, in the liberty. What is the liberty? It is grace alone, no conditions attached. Wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So what is the yoke of bondage? The law. What is the law? Conditions. What is why conditions? To be accepted. Why to be accepted? Because at that time, sins had not been paid for. Why? Because of that time, Jesus had not yet come. So that, at that time, it was performance relationship under the Old Testament. So many cannot see that difference between life before the cross by performance, life after the cross, which is by faith in Jesus Christ only. So grace is what is, grace is Christ. What he did is more than sufficient. It covers everything past, present, future. No conditions whatsoever required to be acceptable except know it, believe it, and walk in it. Religion, religion is very wicked. Religion will not, allow, will not allow you to accept this. I, I just felt it in my spirit. Religion will never allow you to accept this. Religion, it will never allow you to accept this. Because right now, as I'm teaching, your mind is going, you're comparing, you're comparing, you're comparing ministries. That's what is going on in your mind. I can pick it up. Religion will never allow you. You are comparing names. But this is the Apostle Paul. These are the foundational apostles. There is nobody that will be in this category of these foundational apostles whom Jesus gave the right to lay the curriculum down. Anything outside this is never the gospel. I don't care whether the person said it's an angel. I don't care whether they said it's some revelation. If it does not line up with this, that is no conditions for God to do anything for you. That is never the gospel. The moment you drop an iota of conditions, you have neutralized the grace gospel. No matter how good it smells, it feels. The moment a tiny condition is added or insinuated, grace has been neutralized. The moment a condition of something is added for it for God to answer your prayer. I hope you know that. God does not answer your prayer because you prayed at midnight 
or 12 hours or 30 hours or if no no god answers the prayer because on account of christ on account of christ christ is the mediator that is why he said in my name whatsoever you ask in my name the name there has to do it it stands for all that jesus did in his office i answered because i'm in the office of a mediator intercessor I hope you remember the story of the two men that went to pray in the Gospels. One was, one was a publican. One was a tax collector. And under the law, when you are supposed to come before God under the law, you are supposed to bring two goats. So all of them brought two goats. But listen to the, the tax collector's prayer. He said, God, I bring tithes. I do this. I do that. I am not like this poor sinner. So he was basing his merit on what he did, not what God had provided, the lamb of sacrifice. But the other one, the public guy said, said, God, have mercy on me, a poor sinner, as he held onto the goat at that time. So he based it, and God said, that man was heard. So the moment you put any condition, that is why it is not working. The moment a tiny condition is added, and this is where the church has not seen. I didn't see this for so many years. Because one moment you go to a place, they tell you, oh, unless you do midnight, oh, unless you bring the, oh, unless before God we hear. See, all that is additions. It is based on the Old Testament. And when you check up, like I said yesterday, when you check up all the Bible verses, they are all taken from the Old Testament or they are all taken from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John or they are all taken from the book of Revelation where they don't understand how it is explained. And the sad thing is that we will hear the truth like this, but we will still go back to still our old ways of believing God. Because it sounds easier. It's like I'm a, right, I'm a right-handed person and they, they, somebody is telling me to use the left hand. The moment the person turns his back, I go back to my right hand because it's easier. It's, it's convenient, isn't it? I've been used to this. So the grace gospel is no condition. This is the cry of every man. Every human being, believer and unbeliever, has got this problem. Will God accept me? Do I have to do certain things for God to accept me? Or oh, maybe if I do A, B, C, God will accept me. This is the problem of every human being. And God says, listen, I've taken that problem out of the way to make it easy for you. Just believe in me. No conditions attached. So even in the writings of Paul, he gives the example of Abraham over four times. He said, what did Abraham find? How did Abraham become, how did Abraham become righteous? Was Abraham perfect? No. When Abraham, when God found Abraham, Abraham was an idol worshiper. His father, Terah, they worshiped the moon. So when God met Abraham, Abraham had not stopped worshiping the moon. But what qualified Abraham? He believed. After he believed, was he perfect? No. He lied twice to King Abimelech. So what was the promise? That I want you to be an example for people to see as an evidence that when I, my son comes, I come in a human body, I will never count sins against anybody again on account of myself as the only condition, not you. That is what the Bible says. That, and Abraham believed and it was counted. The Greek word is logidizomai. It's an accounting term. It comes from the word, you know, calculate, logic. It's a single entry accounting term, not double entry. That means that the way Abraham behaved, God considered him, accepted him, just as he is, with never counting any sins against him again. The only thing he didn't have was the spirit living inside him. That was what was waiting for Jesus to come. That is what we call the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is not cars, houses, mountains. What Abraham had tents and camels. What am I going to do with those tents and camels? So David even corroborates that. David even underscores that in Psalm 32. He said, blessed is the man, he spoke by prophecy, whose transgressions are covered. In whom that person, his sins have been forgiven. He said, oh, that, that day will come. Those I can see those people whom God will not impute sin to them anymore. A man will be free to worry about, hey, will God accept me? I have to do this. If you look at the 613 laws, the regulations and the conditions to be accepted by God, it is something that is, it, it, it blows one's mind. 
You are not supposed to combine two materials together. It's a sin. You are not supposed to live in houses with balcony. It's a sin. Hey! It was cumbersome, troublesome because of Adam. So the moment a tiny condition is added or insinuated, grace has been neutralized. So the moment in your mind, you think that, oh, maybe because I have not done this, so now God has done, so let me go and do it, then God will hear me. You have, you, have, you have neutralized the grace understanding. You have neutralized it. All, and look at this, God in his infinite wisdom has all possible situations have been duly covered and taken care of from all angles concerning sin. This is referred to as the manifold wisdom of God. So some people in their mind, they think, ah, so Pastor Fred, are you saying that when a person does this, will God forgive him? See, when you are saying that, you are saying that God is not intelligent. It means that God did not foresee, did not know in advance that men will behave like this. So when Jesus was going to die, that was not part of the package. Jesus died to take off only some sins, but some sins knew. Jesus died to take care of sin, but in certain scenarios, it does not work. That is what you're trying to say by saying, eh, so are you saying that if a person does A, B, C, D, that is me, you're saying that God is not intelligent. He, he did not foresee. God does not. Meanwhile, the Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. Every scenario possible. And besides, there is no greater sin than the sin of Adam. Did God know that Adam would blow it absolutely emphatically unequivocally yes but he went ahead and prepared him why because he had the foundation of the way before the foundation of the world he knew it and in his love he had prepared the body of jesus already in hebrews it says that sins and offerings you god you did not desire under the old testament but you prepared a body for me so let us look at this manifold wisdom. so the grace gospel has taken care of every area all angles covered, past, present, future. That is where you mature in Christ. We read it yesterday. That is what is called matured believer. The baby believer in their mind is called nepios. They are tossed. They can't, they can't see it. So they think one moment is grace. Another moment they think is works. One moment is grace. Another is works. Grace, works, grace, works, grace, works. Condition, condition, works, condition. Mm, this, that. And that's a mixture. That's what Paul blasted them. He said, he said, that is what a distorted gospel. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 to 25. Observe closely. And the apostles, they stuck to this throughout. So what is the, what is the emphasis of the Bible? It's the same thing. That grace is given freely with no conditions attached. And this is what the Bible is trying to get across in all their writings. That is why the tenses are in the past tense. The tenses of the grace gospel is always in the past tense. So anything that is in the future or conditional is not the grace gospel. Because conditions means conditions. Condition. Look at it. Conditional tense. And it is always started by if. That means there's a condition. So the grace gospel, you locate it by the fact that it has been done in Christ already. So you walk in it. That's why I always say, say that in Ephesians chapter 2, you say that we have been raised, you see, past tense, together with Christ and made to sit, past tense, together with Christ in the heavenlies, in Christ. So it means the day a person receives Jesus, everything for his life is already in his spirit. But we don't know about it. We don't know how to appropriate it. So when we don't know how to appropriate it and explain because we are not reading the epistles, then we fall back into conditions. See, ah, they say that I am blessed, but I'm not seeing it. I am not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Maybe I didn't fast well, conditions. It's not that. It's just that you have not allowed that to sit in you well to be convinced of it. So look at 1 Corinthians 1, 18, 25. I'll dwell on this one a little bit. For the story and message of the cross is sheer absurdity and folly for those who are perishing. Yes, it sounds foolish. Ah, so I only believe on Jesus. No conditions. And then I am free. Yes, exactly, yes. Ah, no, 
No. No, 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 no. Pastor Fred, no. So are you saying that if somebody made this right now and then they receive Jesus, they are going to have it? Yes. Ah, ah, Pastor Fred. Now, ah, ah, ah. Yes. Did you, have you forgotten Saul of Tarsus? Have you forgotten Saul's experience on the road to, of Damascus? He was murdering Christians and he thought he was doing God a favor. When Jesus appeared to him and he told him that, he said that, listen, Ananias, a man is going to come and he's going to lay hands, you receive your sight. Did you notice Jesus did not mention anything about the killings to Paul? He never mentioned it. Did you notice that Paul even never apologized? He said, he's my chosen vessel. Look at that. Was he chosen at the moment, at the moment that he saw the light? No. He was chosen in God's mind already. The word chosen means that the gospel was also available for him. For the story and the message of the cross. Now the word cross there is a metonymy. It's not talking about the wooden structure. The cross there stands for the death, the burial, resurrection. It's a style of Paul's writing. It's sheer absurdity and folly for those who are perishing and on their way to perdition. But to us who are being saved, it is the manifestation of the power of God. So the power of God does not give any conditions. Then he goes on, verse 19. For it is written, I will baffle and render useless and destroy the learning of the learned and the philosophy of philosophers. Because philosophy has to find a reason. You see, a condition, a reason, a condition. Human beings, they want to have a reason. Oh, I know why this happened. Because, because this happened. You know, in Jesus' time, they even came to me and asked him, Jesus, Jesus, relax, 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 Jesus, relax, wait. This child that was born, blind is it the parents fault or is a result of some demonic manifestation why because in their superstition and their culture they believe that if a person is born like that then it is either god that allowed that to happen or so but look at jesus's answer jesus didn't have time for these kind of things he said it is neither their parents or anything you know, that's not a problem that they have not that their parents have not done anything so let me cancel that thing out of your mind you see when you have not got the grace gospel, you're always superstitious. You're always connecting something wrong with something of the spirit. Always. You see a lizard. Mm, 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 mm. I used to do that. I'll be, I'll be back in my house in Ghana, minding my own business, doing breakfast. I'll see a cockroach. Hey, superstition. I will spend 30 minutes speaking in tongues over the cockroach. Hey, go, 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 go. Hey, go, 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 go. Oh, poor cockroach. I link everything to something demonic. We, don't, we are not saying that Satan is not there, but you are higher than him already in Christ. You are superior to him. What did, what did, the, what did the Bible say? In my name, you will cast out demons. How long does it take to cast out? How, how long? You just speak it. That's it. That's all. He said, you will pick up serpents. What does that mean? You confront them. How long does that take? So, when you have not understood the grace gospel, these are some of the philosophies that come. And the cleverness of the clever and the discernment of the discernment are will frustrate. What is their frustration? What, what's the frustration? That there are no conditions and they can't accept it. So they are, they are, they are frustrated. Ah, 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 how, how, how? Because in human living, nothing is for free. And on planet Earth that we live, nothing, there's not like a free lunch. So that has conditioned our mind that, ah, you are telling me that there are no conditions. I only believe. Ha! <laughs> Pastor Fred, Pastor Fred. Exactly. Because we grew up in this. It was until you were 20 something that you received Jesus. And even after Jesus, you did not come into the light of this. So it has conditioned. So you are, you are mixing, you are mixing, you are, mix, you are mixing your cultural belief systems, religious belief systems with the gospel. You see that now? That is where the problem is because I, I lived there so many years and some are still doing that. They can't separate it. He said, where is the wise man, the philosopher? Where is the scribe? This thing is not about what you know you have learned in school. Where is the investigator? That means that the Bible and its facts stands alone, distinct from everything that we've learned in our schools. You either accept it or you, you, you remain confused. It is not subject to debate. It is something you believe and receive. Has not God shown up the nonsense and the folly of this world's wisdom? What is this world's wisdom? You have to do something to be accepted. 
See that? You have to do something to be accepted. You cannot get any free lunch. For when the world with its earthly wisdom failed, you see that, to perceive and recognize and know God by means of his own philosophy, God in his wisdom was pleased to the foolishness of preaching. What is the preaching? Salvation. What is salvation? By grace. What is grace? No conditions. Procured by Christ and to be had through him to save those who believed. You see, the, you see, the only thing is believe. Believe. That is all. Believe. That is all. It's something that science cannot understand. Mathematics cannot understand. Philosophy cannot understand. Metallurgy cannot understand. Because this, this one is not a subject of earth systems. It operates differently. Believe. And he says, look at that. Look, look at what happens. For, as for Jews, for Jews, while Jews demanding, asking for signs and miracles. For Jews, if there are no signs and miracles, they don't believe. Do you know that you can believe in signs and miracles and still not believe in Jesus? You remember the, the, the miracle of the, of, the, of the loaves and the fish? And you remember, those guys were not born again. No. Jesus did a miracle. The next day, a great crowd came. Jesus said, let's leave these guys. It's not because of me that they are here or their word. It is because of their stomach that they are here. For Jesus to show that the emphasis of the gospel is about him. You come to Jesus because of him. That's why I said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. But some, it's not because of Jesus they are in the church. Like I told about myself, they are in because of only things they can get. So when things are not working, they now want to use underhandedness by force. No, that's where they go into all this. That's why I said, look at that. For as for Jews, they ask for signs and miracles first as an emphasis. And as for Greeks, they pursue philosophy and wisdom first as an emphasis. For Greeks, if the thing is not logic, logical, that is the academician. It should be logical. A, one plus one should be two. Two plus two should be four. Uh -huh. Okay, if, if I'm a human being, and I, if you do me something 10 times, and you, on the 11th time you do me, I'll not forgive you the 11th time. Uh -huh. So if I am like that, then he will even use the Bible to quote from Genesis 1. He said, we are created in his image and likeness. So if we are created in his image and likeness, that means that if I cannot tolerate you after 11 times, you have done something, then God also cannot tolerate you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's human philosophy. But look at Paul, look at Paul, verse 23. Look at his emphasis. He said, I'm not into all that. I am not into all that. We preach Christ. We preach who? We preach who? Christ. That's our emphasis. What he has done already with no conditions. We preach who? We preach who? Christ. You can never put anything above that. Crucified. Look at the tense, past tense. It has been done already. You only receive it. We are not saying that now it's going to happen. Preaching which to the Jews is a scandal. It's scandalous today. The Jew, the Jew has been used to law, law, conditions, 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 conditions. So when they hear that, it is an offense to them. He said, it's a scandal and an offensive stumbling block. So the man is trying to free you. Aren't you glad that there are no conditions? What is your business in this? What is your business? Aren't you glad that there are no conditions? Do you want to go by conditions? Ah, Pastor Fred, so you are saying that, uh, so no, eh, no conditions. Hmm. Hey, Pastor Fred, hmm. Hmm. you keep on going. Hmm. It's an offense. And some even get offended. See? And to the Gentiles, what? It is absurd and utterly unphilosophical nonsense. I look at the verse 24, but to those who are called, glory to God, kabaya baya, to those who are called, labaya, those who have believed the gospel, whether Jew or Greek or Gentile, Christ is the power of God, which is the wisdom of God. Kabadaya. That means that the power is not for destruction. The power was directed towards wisdom. What is the wisdom? The wisdom is in the fact that man was at fault, but I love man. Therefore, I love him so much that I will no more attach any conditions. I channeled it in that area. 
I am almighty God. I can make the planet destruct in one second, but I choose not to because I love man. This is because the foolish thing that has a source in God, this thing, people are calling it foolish. Oh, 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 oh. It's wiser than men. It's not that God is foolish. And the weak thing that springs from God, what is that weak thing? The context, salvation in Christ is stronger than men. So look at the prayer that Paul prayed for you to get it. So when we talk about the grace gospel, the true message, one, it is should be grace alone minus no conditions. Number two, the tenses are always in the past tense designation. The moment you say you are about to, in your mind, is distorted. It has been done. Just that now you are enforcing it, or you are receiving it, or you are claiming it. It has been done. Just that you are receiving it, enforcing it, or claiming it. That is the language of faith. Faith is not going to be. Faith is not going to be. Faith is present tense continuum based on the past of what has been done. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. The evidence is what Christ has done already. That should convince you. So if you get any dream, you, you dream that, ah, you know, I dreamed that 10 people were chasing me. But the word has told you that you are out of the dominion of darkness. So when you wake up, you realize that that does not fit into your status. So do what? Expel it away. That should not cause you to lose your lose your 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 your, your cup of coffee. You know, you know already has told you that you are you have been translated from the dominion of darkness into you know that already. Past tense. So if Satan is bringing something up, ah, uh -uh, no, no, this is not a reflection of who I am. This is not a reflection. I reject it. Simple. This should not cause you to lose sleep. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, 3 to 12, and I close with that. So if you watch Paul is, and the apostles, this is what they emphasize. So why did, why did Paul say that? Because later in Galatians, which we shall do maybe tomorrow, Peter, who worked with Jesus, some a delegation came from Jerusalem. Before that, Peter had preached to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. And they were born again. And Peter had been going there to fellowship with them and eating with them. Because under the law, Jews and Gentiles should not put their hand in one food. So when, when Peter heard, cock, 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 knock, 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 pop, 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 Peter said, huh? The apostles from Jerusalem have come. You see, he was still, still in his legalistic thinking. So Bible says that Peter withdrew. He was with Barnabas. To the point that Barnabas, they put the food away under the, the table. They told the Gentiles, stand away from me, far away. And he would do, wash his hands quickly. Then Paul and Barnabas and the rest opened the door. When Peter saw it, Bible said, when Paul saw it, Bible said, Paul was really mad at Peter. He said, wait, 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 wait. Peter, let us put your status that you walk with Jesus aside. You should know better. Even though you walk with Jesus, let me correct you here in front of everybody so that the truth will remain with us. You know very well that a man is not saved by works. It's not by putting your hand in the bowl of Gentiles that will nullify your salvation. Peter, you should know better. But it is by the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that so much that Peter by his dissimulation, the word dissimulation is hypocrisy. Hypocrite is the word that was used. Made Barnabas also to follow. And Paul, Paul, Paul was really mad. He was not mad as he mad that the doctrinal basis could mislead so many Christians. So Paul corrected Peter there. He said, even though you, Peter, you were a pillar, he said, God has no favorites. You should know better. So this is what he's talking about in Ephesians 3, 3 to 12, about the fact that this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to see. And that the mystery, secret, was made known to me. What was that secret that was not found in the Old Testament? That God would, uh, has accepted man in Christ based on no conditions. It is very hard for many people in the world and even Christians to accept that. And I was allowed to comprehend it by direct revelation as I already briefly wrote to you.
when you read this in my letters, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. Christ, the word mystery means Christ hidden in the explanations of the Old Testament. This mystery, verse 5, was never disclosed to human beings in past generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets. He's talking about the apostolic foundation. That is all the 11 plus Paul and Barnabas, Titus, by the Holy Spirit. It is this, hey, that the Gentiles are now to be fellow heirs with the Jews. So that means since Jesus resurrected, hear me very well. There is no more a special nation of Israel. No. That's what he's talking about. They enjoy that speciality under the, under the order of bulls and cows and goats. But now the special nation is the body of Christ. You are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood called out, Kaleo is the Greek word, out of darkness into his marvelous light, that you may declare the praises of him. It is no more Israel special. It is now the body of Christ, where everybody, whether you are Jew, whether you are Gentile, the condition is the same. Believe, and therefore, with no conditions attached. It's that the Gentiles are now to be fellow heirs. The word fellow is the Greek word metokos, participant, full participants, heirs with the Jews. The word heirs is sunklerenomos. We share the same members of the same body and joint partakers in the same divine promise. In the what? In the what? The same divine promise. What is the divine promise? That I will forgive man on account of Jesus and never count any sins against him based on no conditions, Christ has fulfilled it. That's what he told Abraham in Isaac. He told Israel in Jacob. He told Israel through the prophets. He told Israel through the mouth of David. And he found its expression in the flesh, in the word becoming flesh. And it's the same thing Jesus announced that a time is coming. A time is coming. You don't need a law. You don't need conditions. I will fulfill all. Just believe in me through their acceptance of the glad tidings. Of this gospel, notice, 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 notice. Of this gospel. So he puts emphasis. This is, a, this is a definitive article here. Of this gospel, this one. I was made a minister. That's why we have all been called. Not unto any other. According to what? According to what, 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 is, the, what, is, what is the magnitude? What is the line? What is the yardstick? The gift of God's free grace, no conditions. Which was bestowed on me by the exercise and the working of his effecting of his power. He goes on and on. Look at that. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, God's consecrated, this grace, favor, privilege was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles, watch words, the unending one, boundless two, Phantomless three, incalculable four, exhaustless five, riches of Christ, wealth which no human being could have set up. What is that riches? Christ is grace. He gives it to you freely with no conditions. You cannot try and find logic with it. You cannot use any periscope. You cannot use any kind of stethoscope. You cannot use any kind of microscope. You can't use any mathematical calculus to try and bring a reasonable answer to it. It is to be accepted by faith. And also to enlighten all men and make plain to them what is their plan regarding the Gentiles and, and providing salvation for all men of the mystery kept hidden through the ages. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And concealed until now in the mind of God who created all things by Christ Jesus. So it is without any conditions. Before you receive Jesus and after you receive Jesus, the moment you put any condition, you have neutralized grace, you have robbed the person of the truth of the word of God, and now you are going to make it very difficult for that person to walk securely. The purpose is this, watch, that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God. What is the context? Grace is given freely with no conditions. It has been done in Christ. All angles of possible scenarios 
of sin and conditions and attitudes covered. He calls it many sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might be made known. Watch this. This is an interesting part. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. This one will blow your mind. This one will blow your mind. Might be made known to angelic rulers and authorities, principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. This one refers only to angels. Watch this. He's saying that when we preach like this, angels are taking notes. Angels don't know about salvation. When we preach like this, as I am preaching like this, angels are taking notes. That's why angels can preach the gospel. That's why I said, if even we are an angel, so angels don't know the language of this. That is why in the book of Revelation, the explanation, you've got to be careful because John got it through angels. The language was angelic language. That is why you have to correctly divide it. They don't know about salvation. They don't know. That's, there it is. They don't know about salvation. Salvation was given to the body of Christ only. We are the only ones that can explain it. Angels learn from us. As I'm sitting here, there are myriads of angels in classes. They are listening with attention. He said that, look at that. Many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and noble aspects might be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities. Principally. This one is not demons and powers in the heavenly sphere. This is in accordance with the terms, terms of the eternal and timeless purpose, which has realized, past tense, realized, realized, and carried into effect, carried, carried already into effect. Where? Where? In the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. And what he has done has done what? In whom we have, in whom because of our faith in him, we dare to have what? Boldness. When you know that he gives you boldness, you're not, you not hesitant when you go to prayer. Will God hear me? You will not hear me. Oh, why? Oh, maybe I've not done something. Boldness, courage and confidence of what? Free access. Katabakataya. Free access. Anytime, hey, 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 anytime, anytime. You don't have to have a special position. You don't have to have a special day. He's your daddy. You can walk in out of him every time, always, whether you are ready or not, whether you, anytime, he's your heavenly father. You can walk in and out, in and out, in and out. You don't have to have some special language, some special style, some special position. Free access, an unreserved approach to God with freedom, without fear. For, which is phobia, which brings terror. For God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, which is a sound mind, holistic, whole, saying, who guide us? He has done it for you. Why are you struggling with it? After hearing this, why are you still trying to go back and try and argue in your mind? It's clear before you. It's clear before you. Salvation, the true message is grace of what Christ has done with no conditions whatsoever. And it's in the past tense designation. And God has thought of all angles covered. You don't need to tell God what he should do. He has covered it all already and he hasn't got a problem with it. Why are you making it an issue when he hasn't made it, got an issue with it? In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll leave. Amen. Bless you, Sister Hetty. Bless you, Sister Hetty.